This is part two of our analysis of some of the brightest minds on TikTok regarding the Israel-Hamas conflict. Today, about 70% of all Gazans are considered refugees from the 1948 expulsion. Okay, pause that for a second. How is that even possible? Seriously, how is that even possible? When you say 70% of all Gazans are considered refugees from the 1948 expulsion, the only way to say that that is the case is by including, of course, all of the descendants. Yes, that's right. 70% of Gaza's population are considered refugees or the descendants of refugees from the original Nakba expulsion of 1948. 750,000 Palestinians were expelled from their homes in the 1948 Nakba. More Palestinians were expelled from their own homes in 1948 than the total number of Zionist settlers in all of Palestine, which numbered 600,000. Keep in mind, Palestinian Arabs numbered 1.3 million at the time. They were the indigenous majority. Who were quote unquote expelled. And by expelled we mean they moved three miles down the road from Ashkelon to the Gaza Strip. Ben's counter argument to the harsh reality that Israel is a violent settler colony is to say that, well, they only expelled the Palestinians three miles down the road. It's kind of like saying, well, the Warsaw Ghetto was still in Warsaw. It's not like the Jews had to leave the city. Or the Bantu stands in South Africa were only a couple miles from the actual white cities. Polish Jews only had to move down the road to Auschwitz. It was not that far. So what if the Native Americans had to move to Oklahoma? It was just a few states away. Yeah, they moved three miles down the road into Gaza, where their life expectancy is a decade short than people living in Israel. So what, Israel is supposed to accept back entire populations of people who seek their destruction? What, us Zionists are supposed to live peacefully alongside people that we expelled and ethnically cleansed from their own land? Are you telling us Zionists that we're not supposed to bomb their hospitals and kill their children? Notice how he subtly sidesteps the entire anti-Zionist argument by rendering this straw man, reframing the narrative to be about how it's evil, bloodthirsty Palestinian Arabs who are hell-bent on Israel's destruction. This guy is deeply, painfully unserious. This predictably sparked a war, yes, when you have colonial powers coming into a territory that does not belong to them and forcibly removing people from their land, it tends to get violent. That's the end argument. The end argument, as always, that Israel is a colonialist occupying power, an outpost of the West. Yeah, that's where the argument ultimately ends because that is when the violent occupation started. Imagine that. Yes, Ben, these people were reconcentrated, pushed, herded into a strip of land that was unilaterally controlled by a militant ethnostate which imposed harsh repressive socioeconomic conditions upon those people in which British Prime Minister David Cameron, who was a conservative, labeled Gaza as an open air prison. And all it comes down to is this idea that the Jews are the colonialist occupiers. That, that's, that's all it comes down to, which of course is the fundamental big lie at the root of all of this. Yeah, but you're missing context. What about before Christ? Invoking the Bible as an excuse to ethnically cleanse a population from its territory is a baby-brained middle school argument. Hold on a second. That's not the claim. That, that's all in the claim. The claim is not that the Bible justifies Jewish ownership of the Jewish homeland. No, that is the argument. That is the argument that you are trying to make. In fact, you've spent videos trying to justify Israel's stance here by citing biblical history by going back thousands of years. That's not the claim. The claim is that you are saying that original presence on the land is the historic justification for continued presence on the land. Once again, I will remind you what we as sane, rational, critical thinkers are saying is that biblical times and biblical rights have no status in the world today. No one can make the claim that 2,000 years ago, this is my version of history, and so this is why I have the right to ethnically cleanse these people. And so I'm saying the Jews predated the Palestinians, which is true by every possible measure. That has nothing to do with the Bible. That has to do with a basic historical argument. This is absolutely hilarious to me because the only person here in this dialogue that is trying to make an historic claim to legitimize ownership of a territory is Ben Shapiro. The only people that make these historic claims by invoking biblical times are the Zionists because they know they don't have a leg to stand on. Israel's occupation of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank are universally decried by the international community as a violation of international law. Nobody can legitimize 
legitimately go back 3,000 years ago as justification for violent annexation of territory, Ben legitimately thinks that his favorite team should be above international law. You can go back to 2,000 years ago, you can go back to 3,000 years ago, you can go to 1300 BC, you can go to 1300. It doesn't mean shit. You can cope and you can cry and you can seethe all you want. These are the international laws, standards, practices, and principles that all countries, in theory, must abide by.